Welcome in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Why, asks Mr. O'Hara, are we so afraid of loneliness? Since it must become, eventually, the ultimate condition of us all. And yet loneliness is the most private and prevalent of all the sorrows in our society. Never in history has the world been so noisy, so crowded, and never have so many been so silent and so alone. Our mystery drama, Help Wanted, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Tony Roberts and Carol Titel. They say you're only as old as you feel, but like so many other generalizations, this one, strictly speaking, isn't true either. The fact is, you're as old as society perceives you to be, and so if you live in a youth-oriented world, you can be put out to pasture much sooner than you ever thought possible. Ah, good morning, Miss Colfax. Oh, uh, good morning, Mr. Diaz. Uh, what is there I can perform for you this morning, Miss Colfax? Oh, uh, I can wait till you're finished with this lady. Oh, no, that, that is all right. She's thinking. Well, I don't mind, my dear. As a matter of fact, I'm trying to remember what it was I came in here to buy. Oh, uh, if you're sure you don't mind... No, not at all. Oh, well, um, Mr. Diaz, do you suppose... That is, I wonder if I might return this turkey. There is something wrong with the turkey. Oh, no, no, it's really quite a splendid bird. Well, then, why do you wish to bring him back? Well, if it's uh, too much trouble... Oh, no, 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 no. If something is wrong, you must tell me. Where? Oh, you must not be afraid. Because I call up the wholesale man. I raise hell. I say to him, what are you pulling? Hey, if you think you can sell Juan Martin Diaz, bad turkeys, then, my friend, you are yourself the turkey. <laughs> come, come, we look him over. Oh, but really, there's nothing wrong with the turkey. It, it's the finest the most beautiful, the most plump, and I'm sure the most tender turkey I could ever hope to buy. Hey, hey, if he is all these things, then maybe I did not charge you enough for him, huh? Oh, it's <laughs> not the turkey's fault. Miss Colfax, ¿qué pasa? What's the matter? Oh, Mr. Diaz, they, they're not coming. Not coming? Who is not coming? Robert. My son, Robert, and his wife, and the children. Oh. Uh, this year, this year he said they would come for sure. So I... I... Hey, hey, hey. You know what you want, Miss Colfax. You want a little cup of coffee. I plan to make a, a dinner. No, no, you come. You try the coffee, huh? Hey, nice and hot. All his favorite dishes. Especially turkey. Here, here. Now, you drink some, huh? He promised. He promised this year, positively. No, no, you drink, and soon you feel so good. But just this morning, he called, and he said... Now, Miss Colfax, you just take it easy, you know. He said there was a last-minute change in plans. Well, well, what can you do? And he wouldn't be able to get away. Yes, I know these things happen. You give me that turkey. I put him back in the freezer... And we say no more about it, huh? Yes. And I owe you eleven dollars and quarenta forty seven cents. Here you are. Oh, thank you, Mr. Diaz. Yes, uh, the children today, they forget. I knew you'd understand. Once they don't need you no more, they don't want you no more. You work hard, you send the boy to school. He gets a good job. Now he has his own family. And what does he do? Huh? He forgets his mama. No. No, that isn't true. You mustn't say that. Uh, once a year, he can't even find a Sunday to come home to see his mama. You don't understand. Robert's busy. He's very busy. Nobody is too busy for the Bible. You know what it says in the Bible. Honor your father and your mother. You don't understand. Robert has a very responsible position. Without him, everything in the company comes to a standstill. Something extremely serious must have come up. Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, After yeah. all, he, he just can't 
leave everything and take a 300-mile trip. He's too busy. Too busy to see his mama? Don't you say another word about my son. Don't you dare. Sure, sure. sure. Okay, okay, sure. I don't say anything. Who do you think you are, you stupid foreigner? I'll never set foot in this place again. (laughs) Some people. I don't think she meant that, Mr. Diaz. Yes, I do. She's really an old and tormented human being. Sure, sure, yes. You look at her face into her eyes and you... You see, you you know she can never be happy again. That is too bad. I would like to help her. You would? Yes. I really would. Oh, operator, I, I want to place a, a person-to-person call to Mr. Robert Colfax in Carter City. Uh, the, the, the number is 555-8585. Thank you. Oh, I, I'm sure if I could just talk to him again. Oh, I, I'd better turn that music down. After all, m- maybe I could go visit him. Even if Evelyn doesn't... Oh, oh, oh what's that operation? Oh, well, well, I'm just keep ringing. I'm sure he has to be home. Oh, well, all, all right, I, I'll place the call again. Thank you. Oh, just a minute. I'm coming. I'm coming. Yes? What do you... Hello, dear. Aunt Millie, you're doing it again. Doing what again? How many times must I tell you? Really, Artie, dear, where are your manners? You haven't even said hello. Well, this is more important. Nothing is more important than plain and simple everyday courtesy. Do you know what you did, Aunt Millie? You turned the handle and opened the door. It wasn't even locked. Oh, dear, I simply forgot. Well, you just can't afford to forget. And now, after you close it, turn the lock. Make it an automatic thing. Mm -hmm. I spent most of my life in a place where people never bothered to lock their doors. Well, those days are gone forever, I'm afraid. Oh, I suppose so. Let me make you a nice cup of tea. Oh, thank you, Aunt Millie, but um, I'm here on business. What sort of business could you possibly have with me? Well, police business. Oh, my goodness. Have I done anything? I guess it has to do with what we were just talking about. Keeping your door locked. Evidently, another lady in this neighborhood didn't do it, and so... She's dead. Murdered? Yes. Are you saying that someone just walked into her apartment and and shot her? Oh, Artie. We have another murder of an elderly woman. It's the fifth in less than two months. Oh, no. Well, she lived just down the street. Her, her name was uh, Colfax, uh, Mrs. Anna D. Colfax. Now, why is that name familiar? Well, it turns out you're one of the last people to have seen her alive. Colfax. She lived all alone, a kind of short, uh, thin lady, uh, about 70. Just a minute, Artie. Well, I was checking the neighborhood, and I went into this little grocery store. The owner, a man named uh, Diaz, said that... Yes, of course. That's where I saw her. Yeah, you you were there when she came in. This was an hour before she was murdered. Oh, I feel awful. Mr. Diaz says she was very angry when she left. Well, I suppose you might say she was uh, on the surface. Actually, she was... she was hers. Hmm. How well did you know this, Mrs. Colfax? Well, on the one hand, I didn't know her at all. But on the other, you could say... I knew her very well. 
Well, for just a few minutes, Aunt Millie, forget that I'm your little nephew and talk to me as Detective Lieutenant Arthur McRae, who is charged with solving a very serious homicide. All homicides are serious, Lieutenant. Yes, but uh, this is even more serious because somebody's going around killing elderly ladies and the police department is being accused of negligence, inefficiency, callousness, you name it. Therefore... Somebody in the police department is going to be at fault, and you're looking at him. Oh, Artie, that isn't fair. Well, so, Aunt Millie, do not, I beg you, give me answers that consist of, on the one hand, we have this, but on the other hand, we have that. It's true. I didn't know her until I met her just for a few minutes in Mr. Diaz's store. And then I, I realized that I knew her very well. All right, now, what do you know that could help me as a cop? She was lonely. Yeah, we know she lived alone. No, that's not the same thing. I live alone, but I'm not lonely. She was disillusioned with the world. She felt exploited, ill-used. She was, she, was, she was bitter, angry, frustrated. Well, those were all good reasons why she might want to kill somebody. The question is, why would somebody want to kill her? For those very same reasons. I think you just lost me. Do you remember your equations in mathematics and chemistry, physics? The basic principles that hold for all of them? Remember? I don't think I ever learned them. Both sides of the equation had to balance. Dear Aunt Millie, what has this got to do with... You must look at murder as an equation. <sighs> okay, what is this now? Stated this way. Killer plus motive equals victim. Of course. Therefore, victim equals motive plus killer. So, where am I? Everywhere or nowhere. It all depends. That's what I like about you, Aunt Millie. <laughs> ah, oh, the tea is ready. And don't say you have no time. All right. <laughs> I know you like yours with lemon. Aunt Millie, I really have another reason for being here. Oh, of course. All motives are complex. Nothing is ever simple. You shouldn't be living alone. I mean, certainly not down here. Oh, now, dear, I have to live alone because I'm alone in the world. That isn't true. Janie and I would love to have you stay with us. Oh, dear, Artie. I mean it. Of course you do. Did you see how you said it? You said, stay with us. As if I would be a guest. Oh, look, however I may have said it, Janie and I are sincere about it. Certainly. But there's no room for me in your lives. Aunt Millie. No, not on a daily basis, no. People need their privacy. And that's why I have to live alone. Also, I have to live in this neighborhood because it happens to be the only place I can afford. We worry about you. Really, dear, I'm very, very careful. Oh, true, I may forget to lock my door from time to time, but on the whole, I exercise the greatest caution, honestly. Will you have dinner with us on Sunday? Of course. Please, promise me to keep your door locked. Artie... I'd better talk to you. Aunt Millie, I've got work to do. It's Sunday. Well, there's no such thing as Sunday for a police officer. But there is for a police officer's wife. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of that. I realized I could do one of two things. I could help Janie with the dishes, or I could come in here and talk to you. I have to nail this killer. It's very hard on Janie. She knew what it would be like married to a cop. Not really. She only discovered afterward. Well, I'm doing the best I can. I wish I could help. Aunt Millie, this isn't exactly your field. It's more mine than yours. Oh. Well, with all due respect, what do you know about police work? And what do you know about old ladies? That's what this case is about, isn't it? Someone in the neighborhood hates little old ladies. Hates them enough to commit murder. Wait a minute. Hold on, Aunt Millie. I think... I just think I may have a clue. So soon? How long does it take? After all, the name of the game is insight. The native ability to suddenly see the gold in the dross, the wheat in the chaff. Some people's insight works more quickly than others. Already, Artie thinks he sees something. Do you? 
We'll check it out in the second act. speak of it as an aberration, yet it is one of the oldest of all human activities. It is, as we have learned, the final solution, the ultimate argument. To all people of goodwill, it is abhorrent, yet fascinating. Why do people kill? Is the reason simple or complex? It all depends. Aunt Millie, I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel, but... I'm thinking back to what you said the other day. You know when I first spoke with you? Well, I'm sure I said a great many things, Artie. All right, uh, let me sort this out. Uh, I was looking for leads, and I walked into this little grocery store. Yes, Mr. Diaz's place. Yeah, it turned out uh, she shopped there. Well, most people around here do. He's very accommodating. And I, I asked him when he had seen the Colfax woman last. He replied about an hour before... And I asked him if anyone else had been in the store. Uh, he mentioned you. Now, in talking with him, I got the impression that he didn't care much for Mrs. Colfax. Why? Oh, it's a subjective thing. I just got the feeling that he didn't like her. But I could be wrong. He's really a very nice person. I remember telling you that. Yeah, he can still be a nice person and, and not like her at the same time. What are you trying to say, Artie? Why didn't Mr. Diaz like her? Well, I didn't exactly say he disliked her. Why, well, I, I suppose he did have some justification. Justification? <laughs> it's a good word. It's the first time I've encountered anything even remotely like it on this case. Oh, now, don't build this up. Look, why don't you just try telling me? Well, she... She insulted him. Oh. Well, she said something <laughs> very stupid. What? Well, it was something very unfeeling, unfair, and untrue, and certainly uncalled for. Yes? Are you going to force me to repeat it? I'm afraid I have to. She said he was a... a stupid foreigner. Oh. Well, but of course she was almost hysterical. Mm. Why? Well, it happens quite often. They're under terrible stress. And so you bear your soul to someone. After you've done it, you feel that you really had no business doing it. So you hate the person you unburdened yourself to. The fact is, she did insult Mr. Diaz. Oh, I'm sure Mr. Diaz is too much the gentleman to hold that against her. Well, you never know how deeply an insult can cut. You know, how much it can burn. Surely you're, you're not implying that Mr. Diaz could be the... Oh... Oh, no, no, no. I, I won't even say it. No, I won't, I won't say it either. But at least I have a motive. But would he kill her just because she said something? I'm not something saying I... he would or he wouldn't. I'm only saying that finally I've got something. And maybe it's a way to go. All right, Artie, what do you got? Inspector, I'm not sure. Well, now, the media is roasting us alive. I think I have a focal point. And what does that mean? Uh, a place where everything can come together. Oh, and where is that? A little grocery store in the neighborhood. It's, uh, it's owned and operated by a man named uh, Juan Diaz. Oh, and what does that give us? Well, all five dead ladies shop there. Now, all five dead ladies could have shopped in at least 50 other stores in the neighborhood also, you know. I know for a fact that Mr. Diaz did not like Mrs. Colfax. <laughs> well, does that make him the killer? No, but, well, it could be a star. Uh, at least we have somebody. Oh, uh, what can we do with him? I'm not sure yet. But, well, I want to use some manpower to concentrate on him. Artie... We've got to get some results, and fast. Or everybody around here could be back in uniform. And the mayor is up for re-election. He'll throw us to the wolves. You got something on this Diaz angle? Run it all the way down. Maybe it'll save us. Who is it? Mrs. Jankowitz? Yes? I'm a police officer. Yes? How do I know that? Well, just open the door on the chain, and uh, I'll show you my badge. I got no chain. Chain's no good. Bandits reach in and snap lock. 
So I have a card with my name on it. Uh, let me slip it under the door. You see? It says, Police Department. Detective Lieutenant Arthur McCray. All right. You wait. Come in. Thank you, Mrs. Jankowitz. Oh. What do you want? Well, five women have been killed by someone in this neighborhood. I don't want to talk about it. Well, unless we get people to talk about it, we'll never get the murderer. And what's to talk about? I never seen him. I don't know him. Did you know a Mrs. Anna Colfax? No. A Mrs. Ernestine Simpson? Oh. Yes. She was killed. Yes. Mm. She was one of the five. How well did you know her? Ernestine? <laughs> Pretty good. She had a bad time, that one. Yes? In what way? Uh, she was always crying. Nobody liked her. So I'd say to her, Ernestine, I like you. People did dislike her? No, no. It was all up here in the head, you know. She was old, all alone. She felt uh, she had nothing to live for. Who were some of her other friends? Uh, she was not the kind who'd have friends. Maybe I was the only one who understood her. Her problem was she was always flying off at the handle. Why? I guess she didn't trust nobody. I don't blame her. You know, her husband run off with somebody else. Her own son cheated her out of every cent she had in the world. So she took it out on everybody. I says to her, Ernestine, you can't live like this. Then what would she say? Uh, she'd get mad at me. Did she shop at uh, Diaz's store? Uh, Diaz. Oh, the groceria. Yes. Yes, she did. Then uh, she stopped. She stopped? Why? Uh, they have a fight. She say he cheat her. How, how did he cheat her? Well, I remember. I go into the store. I have to buy milk. And they're having a big argument. About what? Uh, what people argue about these days. Money. <laughs> Don't you tell me I owe you money. Oh, but Miss Simpson, I have it right here in the book. I don't care what you have in that book of yours. I don't owe you a nickel. Uh, perhaps you do not remember. What do you mean? I do not remember. Are you getting at, at what I think you're getting at? No, no, please, please, Miss Simpson, please. What you're saying is that I don't remember because I'm an old lady. That's what you're saying. Oh, no, no, I am only saying... That's that what your you're... little racket here is, isn't it? You deal with old people so you think they're yeah, stupid. Yeah, no, please, Miss Simpson, please. Please, forget it. Yeah, yeah. And do us both a favor. Huh? Take your business someplace else, yes? You're throwing me out of here, huh? Who do you think you are? Listen, I've been thrown out of better dumps than this oh, one. Please, Mr. Singh, so we do not need a scene like... My husband threw me out. My kids threw me out. And now some cheating storekeeper with his thumb on the scale throws me out, too. Mr. Simpson, I must ask you to leave. Where do you want me to go? Do you want me to quit living? You have no right to insult me in front of customers to accuse me of being a thief. Don't you worry. You'll never see me in here again. And uh, how long ago was this, Mrs. Jankowitz? Oh, let me see. She died two, three, no, three weeks ago. Yeah, it was Sunday. This, this happened on a Saturday, the day before. Mm. Tell me, Mrs. Jankowitz, do you think that uh, Mr. Diaz cheated her? Oh, not him. It's just, you know, she was old. She forgot herself. He was mad at her. Mm. Very mad? Well, people in the store and all, how, how did it look? Yes. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Jankowitz. Uh, uh, you gonna catch the killer? I hope so. Mr. Diaz, isn't the fact that you had a violent argument with Mrs. Ernestine Simpson the, the day before she was murdered? Violent? Why? What is violent? Very strong. Uh, oh, we had an argument, yes. Uh, she insulted you? Well, she... Do you, do you deny that she insulted you? Well, a man like me, I get insults every day. 
She called you a thief. It's America, a free country. Each person is allowed to have an opinion. Oh, come on now, Mr. Diaz. You had a pretty violent argument. Well, you know, she says something, I say something. You ordered her out of the store. Oh, no, no. No, no, never. You didn't tell her to take her business elsewhere? I think I say, Miss Simpson, if you do not trust me, you should take your business uh, someplace else. Mm -hmm. And you didn't order her to leave? No, no. You didn't say... I must ask you to leave? No, I only said maybe you better leave and come back when you feel better. You deny there was a fight? No, there was no fight. Me? Fight? <laughs> no. How can I afford to fight with customers? And so you, you deny that there was a violent altercation? Well, if that means what I think, yes, I deny it. And I got witnesses. They tell you the same thing. I... Ah! I remember, sure. There was another lady in the store. She hid everything. Mm. You remember her name? Mm, the same lady who was here when the other one, that Miss Colfax, get angry also. You talk to her. She tells you it was peaceful. I wasn't angry. The same lady who was here the other day? Yeah. She's a good customer of mine. Miss uh, Millie... Uh, Miss Millie... McCray. Aunt Millie. One thing you have to say about our Aunt Millie, she sure does get around. But the pattern is emerging. We have a Mr. Diaz who runs a food store. He has an argument with an elderly woman customer, and shortly thereafter, the woman is murdered. Are we dealing with coincidence? A third act is en route with the answer. You have a string of murders, all for what appear to be trivial motives, if indeed they can be considered motives at all. So you might say... They are the work of a madman. But the problem with madness is usually that it has a logic of its own, an extremely convincing logic that makes excellent sense. That is, on its own terms. Miss Millie McRae was here when this fight took place? No, but it wasn't a fight. Mrs. Simpson wasn't angry? Oh, Mrs. Simpson, she was angry, yes. But I was not angry. And at any rate, you knew Mrs. Simpson. You knew Mrs. Colfax... The other three ladies, Mrs. Hernandez, uh, Mrs. Pinson, and Mrs. Weiss, you knew them too? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were customers of mine. Uh, Lieutenant, uh, what are you trying to say to me? Did you have arguments with any of those three also? No, please, Lieutenant. I don't ever have real arguments with anybody. Just a minute. Dear. Oh, once again, Aunt Millie, you didn't lock your door. You're right. I forgot. Do you know what's going on in this neighborhood? I'll remember. I promise to remember. Five women. Come in, Artie. Come in anyhow. Oh, no. It is nice of you to drop in. How about some lunch? Aunt Millie, I understand you witnessed another scene between Mr. Diaz and one of his irate customers. I did? Yes, another of the ladies who were killed. Mrs. Ernestine Simpson. Oh, yes. But why didn't you tell me? Why should I have told you? Well, it's another case of where a woman gets killed after an argument with Mr. Diaz. Artie. Oh, surely you... You don't suspect Mr. Diaz. Well, Mr. Diaz, rightly or wrongly, is the only suspect we're even remotely close to at this time. Oh, but he's such a nice man. Well, every now and then, nice people... Well, something comes over them and uh, they commit murder. Oh, but, but Mr. Diaz... Look, that argument some weeks ago uh, with Mrs. Simpson, do you remember it? Let me think. She accused him of having cheated her. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, I seem to remember. Uh, Mr. Diaz carries many people on credit. Otherwise, there'd be no reason to buy there. I mean, a customer could do better in the chain supermarkets on many items. Yeah, well, now tell me more about uh, Mr. Diaz and Mrs. Simpson. Well... 
When he charges an item, he writes it down in a book. And she denied one particular entry? Oh, she absolutely refused to acknowledge it. She became furious. I suppose Mr. Diaz took it as an attack on his integrity, which I, I suppose it was. Was he angry, too? Hmm. In his own way. Which is what? He doesn't raise his voice. He just turns a bit pale, bites his lip, and somehow you sense he's seething inside. So it was a rather violent scene. Huh? Well, it was a particular kind of violence. I I'm afraid many of us do give Mr. Diaz a rather difficult time of it. How? Well, so many of us are alone. Oh, not me, Artie. I have you, and I have Janie. Just as much of you as I need to sustain me. I'm lucky. I'm not like so many of them. Them? You get old, Artie. And maybe you never had much money, but it didn't matter because you had other things. Well, now those are gone. And it's lonely. You don't know how lonely... Especially for women who are always dependent on others for everything. Yeah, I understand. But what has that well, got to do... Well, it's an empty world, Artie. It's an empty life. And trifles suddenly assume unbelievable importance. And that's because life... Life itself is now nothing but a, a series of trifles. You yourself are made to feel like a trifle. Would you do something for me, Aunt Millie? Of course. After each of these two incidents, you were in the store with Mr. Diaz afterwards. Can you remember what he said? Afterwards? Oh, let me think. Try. I must establish his state of mind. Try the most recent one first. Mrs. Colfax. After she walked out. All right. She walked out, and he said... M Mr. Diaz said... Oh, my... Some people to say such things. Uh, I don't think she meant it, Mr. Diaz. Oh, I do. She, she's really a terribly tormented human being. Yes, but still and all... But you look at her face, at her, at her eyes, and you, you can see she could never be happy again. Uh, that is too bad. I would like to help her. You would? Yes. I really would. And? That was all. Okay, okay. Now, that's what happened uh, with the Colfax lady. After the incident with the Simpson woman uh, uh, three weeks ago, what did he say then? Well, let me try to frame that once more. Uh, there was another lady in the store at the time, evidently a friend of hers. I I've seen her around. Oh, no, I know, I think her name is Mrs. Um, uh, Jankowitz. And when Mrs. Simpson stormed out of the store, M Mrs. Jankowitz went, went out after her, obviously to calm her down. Well, I, I just stood there looking at Mr. Diaz, and finally he said, <sighs> Why do I put up with this? Oh, now, Mr. Diaz. She has no right. But the poor woman is troubled. Uh, she knows how to give trouble. Isn't it better to forget it? How can I forget it? I'm human. Mrs. Simpson obviously needs help. Perhaps I could help her. Nobody could help her. And that was the conversation? As far as I can remember. All right. Hmm. All right, what? Surely you don't believe he was angry enough to commit murder. Well, anger is a relative state. Who knows how much is enough? Why, here's how it lays out, Inspector. Uh, we know for a fact that all these ladies kept their doors locked. Nobody broke in. Uh, which means uh, they knew who it was. Yeah, right. They willingly opened the door because they knew who was ringing the bell. Uh, th these were all highly suspicious ladies. Uh, they certainly had good cause. Uh, at least two of them that we can account for had arguments, uh, episodes, whatever, with Mr. Diaz. Hey, uh, what you're trying to build here is a case against Diaz? No, no, Inspector. I'm, I'm trying to lay out the materials and then see if it builds itself. Uh-huh. Now, after the incident in his store, Diaz goes to see these ladies, whichever one at the time. He rings the bell. They, they ask who's there. He says, Mr. Diaz. They recognize the voice. They let him in. Why? 
They didn't exactly part friends. Diaz may say, I come to apologize. And maybe he tells them also he's got a little gift. Logical? Hmm. <laughs> sure sounds logical to me. But the DA is going to need an awful lot more before he'll want to take it to court. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Diaz. Oh, yes, Lieutenant. Do you own a gun? Uh, no, no, Lieutenant. Mr. Diaz, I'm really very sorry for you. You're sorry? Why? Oh, I guess you were pushed beyond that point. I uh, do not follow you, Lieutenant. Oh, well, I think you'd be found guilty, but through reasons of insanity. Oh. What, what what are you trying to do to me? All right, let me tell you a story, Mr. Diaz. There's, there's a man named Juan Martin Diaz. And uh, if you know something, there's no record of him anywhere in this country. There's no fingerprints, no birth certificate, no social security. Do you know why? He's an illegal alien. No, 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 I, no, I, I, I am not. I'm sorry, Mr. Diaz. Listen, I work hard. Oh, how hard you will never know. Day and night. I, I know, work. I know, and it'll be in your favor. First, hear me out. Illegal immigrant Diaz opens a business and does well. He's a credit to the community, but he has to take a great deal of irritation. Insult. I, I, I swallow my pride. Well, you tried to, but it's too much. We checked with the police in Mexico. You were in jail several times for assault. I, I, I was young. I was stupid. I, I had a terrible temper. That is why I left. I, I had a criminal record. But, but I changed. I changed. So, when some of these angry and troubled old ladies gave you a hard time, I guess it was the last straw, huh? That is not so, Lieutenant. You, you do not understand. Well, you'll have your day in court. <laughs> minute. Aunt Millie. Artie, darling, please don't scold me. I know I left the door unlocked again, but it doesn't matter. They've got the murderer. Have they? You arrested him. I know. And we can build a pretty good case. It's so logical for Mr. Diaz to be the killer. Everybody's so willing to accept it. After all, he's, he's an illegal alien with a record. But as I think and think and think about it, I, I'm just not sure. Well, if Mr. Diaz is not the killer, who is? Do you want to tell me, Aunt Millie? Artie. You kept saying all the time you were going to help those poor ladies. Suddenly I asked myself, is that what she meant? I have to ask her. I'm asking, Aunt Millie. Is that what you meant? Artie. You really can't allow Mr. Diaz to pay for crimes he didn't commit, can you? No. Why, Aunt Millie? Why? Oh, Artie. These poor, poor, wretched people. What was left for them in their life? You didn't see them every day as I did. On the streets. Aimless, rootless, helpless, hopeless... No one cares, Artie. No one cares, really. Or maybe there are just too many of them and not enough ways to help or whatever. But there they are, and it... It, it just broke my heart. That... That's how you helped? Well, what should I have done? Let them suffer through another year or two or three of being bewildered and brutalized by life I I wanted to be kind I only wanted to be kind yes, yes I understand it, it would seem to me that they were looking at me their eyes begging pleading help me help me well what what other way did I have what other help could I give them but Aunt Millie it's wrong to commit murder Oh, it wasn't murder. They were dead already. I'm sorry, Aunt Millie. I know. What I did was wrong, and I shall pay for it. But remember, Artie, not all the blame should rest on my shoulders.
for what will certainly be the rest of her life, Mr. Diaz was released and will be allowed to remain here. Under no circumstances can we condone what she did. After all, no one among us can be permitted to play God. Yes, and it would be a much better world if less of us played the devil, too. I shall return shortly. you done for me lately is always an accusation leveled against those who are older and it's in keeping age is the problem our society finds so troublesome some primitive societies made no bones about it they merely marooned their elderly members in the wilderness and before you shiver at their barbarism remember we do the same in many cases it all depends on how you define wilderness our cast included Tony Roberts, Carol Titel, Bryna Rayburn, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. is apparently changing gears to fill the nation's gas tanks. I'm David Jackson reporting on the CBS radio network. For some time, the administration has been telling big oil to make more heating oil at the expense of gasoline, so we'll have enough fuel to last the winter. Now the New York Times is quoting Deputy Energy Secretary John O'Leary as telling a Senate subcommittee the formula is being revised, that now refiners are being asked to make more gas and even tap gasoline stockpiles to help ease the immediate shortage. By summer, he says, gas supplies could be up to 97% of last year's level. Indeed, something seems to be working in California. Gas lines there, the rule for several months, were shorter Monday, in some cases dramatically so. But no one is saying the fuel crunch is over. In Paris, at a meeting of the International Energy Agency, a consuming nation's version of OPEC, Americans were taken to task by the European Common Markets Energy Commissioner Guido Brunner. Americans, he says, use too much oil and won't face the fact that it's running out. But the U.S. Energy Secretary Schlesinger says that's not necessarily so. While there is a great debate in the United States whether or not the oil shortages are real or whether they were contrived by some mysterious force, I think that the message is getting through to the American people. In their viscerals, in their hearts, they know there is a problem. Gas prices will keep going up, a new congressional study says. Price decontrol, new federal pricing rules, and inflation may boost the cost of a gallon another 20 cents by 1981. In San Francisco, former city supervisor Dan White has been convicted of voluntary manslaughter in the November killings of Mayor George Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk. The prosecution had asked for a first-degree murder conviction. Voluntary manslaughter means White could be paroled in three years. His attorney, Douglas Schmidt, greeted the verdict with mixed emotions. I can't be happy when two people are killed. I'm, you know, there's nothing to be happy about. I'm, I'm pleased that, that the jury was able to put aside the emotion of who was killed and look at the facts and, and be objective about it, and I think they were. Uh, but... God, uh, that's not going to help the Moscone family, and that's not going to help all of the people that uh, loved Harvey Milk. Milk represented San Francisco's gay community, and a group of gays angered by the verdict have marched to City Hall. Latest reports say they're trying to force their way in. Several windows and plate glass doors have been broken. Some Texas senators have been hiding out since last week, so the Senate there can't muster a quorum and do business. 
They're trying to block a bill setting up a presidential primary. Arrest warrants have been issued for all. Now there's word at least one may be ready to come in from the cold. Tales from Dave Mason of affiliate KLBJ in Austin. Senator Chet Brooks of Pasadena, who is rumored to be in Mexico with several of his colleagues, has issued a press statement through his Austin Capitol office saying he's spoken with the lieutenant governor and informed him he will return to Austin from an out-of-state business trip. Brooks said he's offered to negotiate an end to the deadlock with Hobby, but said he has not changed his personal opinion that the split primary proposal is against the best interest of Texas. The lieutenant governor said he expects the senator to come directly to the Capitol. Sergeant-at-Arms Kelly Arnold said that he would detain the senator when he arrives, since he is still absent without leave of the lieutenant governor. However, Arnold indicated he has no immediate plans to apprehend the senator before he returns to the Capitol. Dave Mason for CBS News in Austin. The Stanley Cup, Professional Hockey's Trophy of Excellence, will stay in Montreal for another year, the fourth in a row. The Canadian beat the New York Rangers Monday night, taking the game and the playoffs 4-1. to David Jackson, CBS News.